Welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. I'm Jeff Allison and thank you for watching. Welcome back guys to Allison Customs Project Car TV. Uh, we're at the help section uh, again and we're using our multimeter to do a voltage test through a circuit to see how uh, how to test for uh, problems within a circuit. So get the camera in here close so you guys can see what we're doing and get this going. Well, guys, this is going to be essentially part two of the of how to use a voltage meter. Um, today we're going to be checking a circuit for volt. Okay guys, so I've created a very basic circuit here for us to use to work from. We have a switch, we have a, a light that is controlled by that switch, we have a fuse, we have a very common uh, two-wire connector that you might find under the hood of your car somewhere, um, and then we have our power source, our battery. So the first thing we'd want to do this battery is not marked in any way to tell me which way is positive or negative in the two leads there. So we're going to use our voltage meter and we want to find A, how much voltage we have and which side is positive and negative. So I'm just going to pick two and it says we have 11.26 volts. Now if I'd have done it backwards when I first tried, it would say over here, same voltage, get those on there well, but I have a minus sign out here meaning my leads are reversed. So that tells me that the one on my right is the positive circuit, positive side of the circuit. So we're going to go ahead and hook this wire up and I'm just using an alligator clip to clip it to the metal in there. Okay, so we've got our wires hooked up and now we have a complete circuit. Power source, the fuse, the connector, and our switch and our light. And when we turn it on, light comes on. This is a lighted switch so it has a ground in it to light up that little LED. But the, the the circuit lights up there just fine. Now, if we were testing, let's say we thought this bulb was bad and we decided we wanted to test this circuit. First, we're testing for voltage. So I showed you how to come in and we tested for voltage here. We had 12 or close to 11 point something volts over there. And so the battery is good. We want to know, do we have voltage? at our fuse. So we're going to leave our ground hooked up to the battery and we're going to come check our fuse and we're going to say well we have voltage on this side of the fuse and there's a little little stick of metal, a little piece of metal sticking out of the top of each side of that fuse. You can test both sides. If you have voltage on both sides your fuse is good. So that's not our problem. Next thing we would come to our connector and go well do we have power going through our connector? We know it came out of the fuse, so we assume it went into the connector. So this is when we'd use a plug that has a very sharp edge and, and uh, will point in there, and so it's for checking the back side of a circuit or a plug. And as I push it in there, you can see that we have 11.16 volts coming out on the other side. Okay, once we test it through there, we're going to want to check and see if we have power at our switch. So we can get rid of this back probe and we can touch the lead that goes into the switch supplying power and we see we have about 11.2 volts there. Now, so we go, okay, well we have power from our battery all the way to our switch. Do we have power through our switch? And right now when we touch the lead that should provide power, it shows zero volts. When we turn the switch on, we get voltage showing that the switch is functioning. So then if this bulb was burned out, we would then trace over to the light and we would check the circuit at the light if we were showing voltage like we are there. If this light wasn't working, we would then assume it was either A, it doesn't have a good ground, or the bulb itself is burned out. Now to test the ground, it, um, we can do it as a voltage test again. This time, we're going to use our positive lead on the battery. Let's get that set in there. We can check, make sure we have voltage at the battery so we know. Test this at the battery here so we know our voltage meter is working. We're showing 10.8, so a little more resistance in here. The battery's come burning down just a little bit. And as we go through, we could test the ground side. Well, the ground also has a line that goes through our plug, so we could, we could back test that and see that we had a ground. We could then come over to the light and check the ground side of the light and see that we're getting our same voltage that we were at the battery. 
So we know that was the case. We have a ground, we have that, we have a light, or we have a ground and a positive. If the light wasn't working, we'd know that it was a burned out bulb. Or in this case, a wire that's loose. <laughs> Um, additionally, you can do most of that same testing with a test light. Take this loose, turn this off. So if I didn't have a voltage meter and I was going to check voltage through a circuit, I would do much the same thing. I need to hook the black wire up here, the end wire, to the ground circuit. So we got that. We'll test to make sure we have a good circuit. We have a light bulb, so we have power. We could then come to our fuse. Check both sides of our fuse. We have power on both sides, so we know that's good. It's a little harder to do a back probe because this point is so big, but um, you would basically skip over the connector and go straight to your switch. You check, okay, I have power coming there. Then check the back side of the switch. I have power going through the switch. If the switch was off, the light goes out. And then I could check over at my light bulb and go, hey, I have power. And conversely, you can hook this up to the positive side of your circuit. Check your ground. Okay, we have a light. We don't need to check the fuse because it's on the positive. We come all the way to the source. This isn't. This doesn't matter about the ground or the switch position doesn't matter for the ground. And check both sides of that. If we had a ground on both sides, we'd know that it was the light bulb. And that's it. That's how you test a circuit for voltage. And it's a little more complicated in a car, but only because it's spread out. You may have to add longer leads to your to your tester or your voltage tester to get good places. But remembering that a car has a, and motorcycles have, uh, for the most part, are negative ground. So anywhere on the chassis that's not covered in paint or something should provide you a good ground. But you should always check your circuit. When you think you found a good ground, go find, go to the battery where you know you have a positive source and make sure you have the voltage that you expect to have. Um, the average car works up in the 14 volt range when it's running, the battery will drain down to as much as 10 volts uh, if it's sitting for a long time and still start. So uh, we'll be doing another series here real quick. We'll be testing uh, continuity next time and I'll show you how to do a continuity test using the feature, uh, the continuity feature on your multimeter here. Thanks for watching Allison Customs Project Car TV. Like us on Facebook and check us out at allisoncustomsonline.com.